Welcome to this week's edition of Earth Juice. Today we bring you the exciting news that you can now power your mobile phone with P. Sam, do you want to um, give mine a quick squirt as well? <laughs> also in the news this week, we have a vampire grave. Dolphins calling each other by name. We've got drunk seagulls and a rumble in the jungle. By 2016, an estimated 1 billion people will own a smartphone, putting a huge strain on global electricity use. In fact, to charge that many smartphones for an entire year would use about the same amount of electricity as 300,000 homes. But charging your smartphone with a traditional plug-in charger is soon to become a thing of the past. Scientists from the Bristol Robotics Laboratory have found a way to harness urine to power a mobile phone. Now, it might sound a little bit disgusting, but in fact, our waste matter is full of organic fuel. Microorganisms feed on the urine, breaking it down and producing electricity as a byproduct. The more they consume, the more energy they release, eventually enough to power a mobile phone. But don't rush to the shops just yet because it's only in the early stages of development. However, the scientific whiz kids have big ambitions. They also want to develop a toilet which could help power showers and even your house lights. Archaeologists in Poland have recently uncovered a vampire grave. Four skeletons were discovered with their heads decapitated and their skulls placed upon their legs. Now, it sounds pretty gruesome, but in fact, it was an ancient execution ritual designed to make sure that the dead remained, well, dead. By removing the head, it was hoped that suspected vampires would find it hard to find it again, making it much harder for them to rise from the grave. Sam, please, I'm trying to read the news. Sorry. Of course, there's only sketchy evidence that vampires even existed. Most archaeologists believe that the concept of vampires comes from the misdiagnosis of diseases such as tuberculosis and rabies, both of which give cause to vampire-like symptoms. On a slightly lighter note, it seems that us humans are not the only species to call each other by name. A team from St Andrews University in Scotland have discovered that bottlenose dolphins each have a signature whistle. The team recorded the individual whistles or names of every dolphin in a wild group and then played them back through a series of underwater speakers. And they discovered that just like humans, every time a dolphin's name was called, the specific animal responded. Hey, uh, Chuck. Mm hmm. I knew it. Damn. The researchers think that the dolphins use these names to communicate on a very personal level, which is really important considering they often swim in murky water. In southern England, drunken thugs are on the rampage. But it's not your usual teenage hooligans. Oh no, this time it's gulls. The birds have been seen to be gorging themselves on flying ants, which contain formic acid. Much like alcohol, this chemical is thought to have a lethargic effect on the gulls, stupefying them and, according to locals, making them much more confident. In fact, the gulls have been seen dominating the roads, refusing to get out of the way of oncoming cars. And indeed, last night, bikes. I myself was weaving between gulls on my way home. And finally, scientists are using the very latest audio technology to identify animals of the rainforest. By recording animal chirps, barks, growls, whistles, indeed any rumble in the jungle, a team from the University of Puerto Rico are using some specially designed software to recognise each individual species. By detecting these acoustic signatures, the kit will save the scientists ploughing through hours of recordings, listening to every single one. In fact, this breakthrough means that they can collect far more data, adding to what we already know about life in the rainforest. That's it for this Earth Juice. However, if you are watching on Tuesday the 30th of July, then stay tuned because tonight at 11 o'clock UK time, that's 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in the States, we are going to be going live to Alaska where hopefully we're going to be watching some grizzly bears catch salmon. So you don't want to miss that. Now, we'll also be putting some questions to the rangers. So if you have anything you'd like to ask, put it in the comments below or join us on Facebook or Twitter. So hopefully we'll see you later. Take care.